Iran's nuclear program began under the Shah. We sold Iran their first reactor, a research reactor at the University of Tehran. The Shah had plans for building nuclear power reactors. When the Iran Revolution happened, the Ayatollah shelved those plans. He thought this was Western technology. We didn't want any part of it. But then Iraq attacked Iran in the 1980s, and they used chemical weapons against Iranians, killed thousands of them, and nobody lifted a finger. In fact, the U.S. vetoed a resolution at the U.N. Security Council condemning these attacks. Iran decided they had to restart the Shah's secret nuclear program, and they did. Fortunately, they didn't get very far with it. And the thing kind of petered out, and the war ended, and by the 1990, it was just a little fiddling around in the labs, nothing much. And it looked by, like by 2003, they turned it off completely, according to U.S. intelligence. But they went ahead with the civilian side of the program. They went ahead with the construction of a nuclear reactor, which is now operational, and they decided they wanted to build their own fuel plant. And here's the problem. Most countries that have nuclear reactors don't make their own fuel. They buy it from the people who help them build the reactors. So Iran buys its fuel from Russia. The fuel is used up, it goes back to Russia. Fine. No bomb threat there. But if you build fuel, and this is what they've done, they now have thousands of centrifuges enriching uranium. The same facility that can enrich uranium to low levels for fuel can enrich it to high levels for bombs. 3% enriched, fuel. 90% enriched, a bomb. So the question is, do you trust them? Do you think this is really about making fuel? And that's the whole debate. Is there some way to limit that program so that we can verify that it's purely civilian and they cannot quickly or secretly break out and build a bomb? That's what our concern is, and that's what the negotiations are about this year.